Hi, I'm Tim Grieving. I'm a music journalist. I contribute to Variety LA Weekly and Classical KUSC. I'm here at Sonic Fuel Studios with Paul Castillo, a parliamentarian. Paul, why don't you just tell us a little about yourself? Well, I'm a professional musician in the Los Angeles area. Uh, I've been playing uh, professionally since I got out of college, and that is now more decades than I care to admit. I've been doing that for a long, long time, and I've been a member of the AFM. I've been a member of two locals in the American Federation of Musicians. Uh, as a parliamentarian, I actually got my start when I was going to attend a meeting of one of my unions and had to prepare for the meeting and got a little condensed version of parliamentary procedure so I would have some idea of what goes on. And once I attended the meeting, I became more interested in that and actually had made that a lifelong study. So for the purposes of talking about musicians' unions, what, what are the basics of uh, parliamentary procedure? All labor unions are founded on democratic principles. Uh, the rule of one person, one vote. Uh, the rule of respecting the rights of those who are not within the majority, though there is a majority rule. And uh, what it all comes down to in any democratic process is the meeting and the vote. Within the context of parliamentary procedure, there are do's and there are don'ts. And the whole idea uh, behind a parliamentary procedure is to arrive at a consensus and some agreement on any particular matter that needs to be addressed. Let's go over some terms, uh, basic terms. What are bylaws? Bylaws is a actually written set of rules that are adopted by the, by the society, or in this case, uh, the musicians union, that provide the uh, rules for how elections are held, if you like the officers of the organization, how meetings are run, how the officers perform their duties of office, and so forth. A good set of bylaws will include election procedures, disciplinary procedures, and also when and how meetings are going to be called for the members. What about a motion? A motion is something that's done at a meeting. Meetings to the, to the greatest extent possible should be where decisions are made and not so much where information is shared. Information should be shared beforehand. This is true for any meeting, not just a meeting that, uh, of a democratic society. Any meeting is much more efficient uh, when the information is shared beforehand. There is some information sharing, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But the purpose of a motion is to put an item before, we call it the assembly, all the people at the meeting, uh, put it before the assembly so that they have the opportunity to discuss it and eventually take a vote on the matter. Okay. Resolution. Resolution is a special kind of motion. Okay. Uh, it's a more formal kind of motion. It generally contains something we call a preamble, although it's not requirement. A preamble will be something in, that is a paragraph or a series of paragraphs that usually will explain why the resolution or motion is being put forward and why it, it might be necessary to adopt uh, that particular resolution. So the resolution is a form of a motion. It's a little bit more specialized, more form, formal way of entering or producing a motion at a meeting. Okay. Point of order? Point of order is one of the um, special, special motions that we have at a meeting. A point of order is something that a member can raise if they perceive that there is something that is not consistent with democratic procedures or with the procedures that are outlined in the bylaws. For example, in a meeting it is necessary for people to, to do something we call obtain the floor before they speak. Um, and there's usually a set of rules that determines that and that what rule may or may not be written down. But when somebody else has the floor and is speaking and another person disagrees, in order for them to debate that, that issue, not debate the person, but debate the issue, they must obtain the floor. Sometimes they will start trying to argue from the floor. Then that becomes a point of order. A member can raise that point of order from the 
from the floor of meeting, point of order, the member is speaking out of turn. Or if somebody's entering a motion and it is a vi it would be a violation of some law, public law, or the bylaws of the organization, they would raise a point of order and say, this motion is illegal because it violates this bylaw or that or this rule or regulation of public law. So with that glossary of terms sort of as the foundation, explain what happens in a typical meeting. When the meeting begins, there is something called a chair of the meeting. And who the chair will be is usually designated by the organization's bylaws. It is usually, if there is a president of the organization, it's usually the president. And the president serves as chair. The purpose of the chair is to facilitate the meeting and to make sure that everything runs smoothly and according to the bylaws and whatever special rules or regulations may be adopted by the organization, and uh, as well as ensuring the democratic process. The chair, to the extent possible, should refrain from any personal opin opinions he or she may have. Um, and the purpose of the meeting is to arrive at the decisions. So they are taken up in the order of business, one at a time. And as you go through the list of the items of business, members have the opportunity to express their views, to speak for or against the, you know, any particular item, and to make motions or resolutions that are germane to the item of business at hand. What are the rules of debate at a meeting? The rules of debate, we call it a debate, it's more like a discussion. Uh, the motion is made by a member or a resolution, and it has to. It usually has to be seconded, and somebody from the floor, from the meet, in the meeting, seconds the motion. Uh, then we have what, that part called the debate. It's actually a discussion where people at the meeting, members uh, at the meeting, can express their views. They can speak for the motion. They can speak against the motion. They can ask questions about the motion. They can put forth something we call a subsidiary motion to maybe modify the motion at hand a little bit. So, uh, or they could postpone, they could postpone it, uh, they could delay it to another part of the meeting, um, or they could actually, as a subsidiary motion, say for example, when we take this vote, I move that when we take this vote, that it be by secret ballot. And then that's a subsidiary motion, it's germane to the motion on the floor, and then that would be taken up separately, so then the members would discuss whether or not that particular main motion should be voted on. So if you had to distill all this down into layman's terms, uh, how would you do that to uh, express to a member how these rules and all this procedure uh, helps them enact change or, or to participate? Well, one of the great things about parliamentary procedure is if a member at the meeting doesn't understand something or needs information, they can always raise a point of information. That's another one of the points that, you know, in addition to the point of order, you can say, point of information. I want to make a motion. How do I obtain the floor to make a motion? All questions, by the way, at a meeting should always be directed to the chair not to another member. All questions need to be directed to the chair. The chair may, of course, defer to someone else at the meeting for the answer, but the question has to go to the chair. And if, you're, if a member is not sure about what's going on, they can always raise a point of information and ask. If a member needs help crafting a motion, they can always obtain the floor and say, I want to make a motion and this is what I want it to do. One of the duties of the chair is to help the member put together that motion. So how exactly does a member uh, get an issue or a motion or something uh, addressed in, in a meeting? Well, there are actually several ways to do it. And one of the things they could do is contact the officers of the organization 
and request that an item be put on the agenda. And sometimes that does work. Um, if for whatever reason the members don't want to do it that way or get some resistance about doing that from other people or the officers, uh, they can bring it up at the meeting. Uh, one of the items of business at any democratically run meeting is something called new business. And under new business, any member can obtain the floor according to the rules and regulations of how one obtains the floor. And again, if that's not clear to a member, point of information, how does a member obtain the floor to make a motion? And that, that will be answered. So you have to be recognized by the chair to obtain the floor. Once you obtain the floor, you can make a statement, you can provide information, you can enter a resolution or a motion. You know, and the standard format for that is, if it's a motion, I move that. You know, we set a, a new meeting, a special meeting on such and such a date. The motion or the resolution has to be seconded, and then it's open for discussion and an eventual vote. When the vote is to be taken, the chair states the motion is, and they will state the motion. And then you either vote for it, or against it, or you abstain. What are the rules for taking a vote? Uh, there are actually several methods that are used to take a vote. I just mentioned uh, just a moment ago about a secret ballot vote. This is what we, many of us are familiar with, just in our own uh, public, public election can, uh, elections where it, we have a ballot and we fill it out and our vote remains secret. That's just one method. And uh, usually that is not the way it is taken at a, at a membership meeting or a society meeting. Uh, it can be taken what we call viva voce, which is by voice. All in favor say yay, all, all opposed say no, and then the chair, based upon the, the response he gets to those questions, makes a determination as to who, um, how, how, how the vote goes. There is also something we call the division of the house, <clears throat> and this can be either a standing vote all in favor, please stand, and they count the number of people. All opposed, please stand, and they count the number of people. Or it can be done by raising a ra raise of hands. All in favor, please raise your hands, and they do count. All opposed, they do count. So those, there are a number of voting methods. They are usually determined by, by the chair of the meeting as to how that vote will be taken, unless there is something in the bylaws that says it needs to be voted on a certain way, or the members at the meeting, as part of a subsidiary motion to the main motion, have made a decision about how the vote should be taken. What it all comes down to is at the meeting, it, the meeting is there for the members. They decide what goes on in the meeting, ultimately, but it must be within what we call the decorum of the meeting. If there are any special rules or regulations that have been um, adopted or established to run the meeting, how the meeting is run, it must follow those. Absent any of those, it usually goes according to parliamentary laws. And as I explained earlier, that is one person, one vote. Members respect each other. They are not disrespectful to each other. Um, to the extent that they don't even mention each other's names. In the, in the most formal sense, if somebody disagrees with somebody who's already spoken, they would not say, for example, you know, I don't agree with Tim. That's really not allowed under parliamentary law because you're making it personal. All right, what you, what you would do is say, I disagree with the member who has previously spoken in favor of this or whatever the dis disagreement might be. So what do you do if there is a belligerent, un unruly member that speaks up during a meeting? Well, unfortunately, that does come up from time to time. And since it is the responsibility of the chair 
to ensure that the meeting is run smoothly. The chair should, in those instances, do something we call call the member to order. And the chair has a number of ways to do that, but the common one is they say, okay, I'm, that's, your remark is out of order. Please refrain from that conduct. Uh, if it happens again, we may need to take disciplinary action. Now, if for some reason the chair does not do that, any member who is present at the meeting can raise a point of order. Point of order, this member is not observing the decorum of this meeting. Will the chair please call the member to order? So if that's not enough, let's say that happens, member is called to order. Then the member still is unruly or belligerent. Then the chair will call the member to order and may actually ask the member to apologize to the members, other members who are present. And if the member refuses to do so, the chair can put the matter to a vote. Shall this member be allowed to continue to be at this meeting uh, without apologizing to the membership? And a member could actually be expelled under those circumstances. It's rare, but it can happen. So what would you say to a member who may be confused by all this jargon at work or intimidated by the procedure, who maybe wants to be more involved or wants to have a better understanding? How would you encourage them to, to get involved or, or to get over any kind of confusion or fear about, about the way this all works? Well, there are a number of resources that are available. There is the actual Roberts Rules of Order, newly revised, over 600 pages. But there is also a guide called Robert's Rules of Order in Brief, which has about 99.99% of what anyone would ever really need to know for a meeting, unless they wanted to be a parliamentarian uh, or revise it or, or construct a set of bylaws. There's a wonderful 10 page primer called Cliff Notes for Robert's Rules available on the AFM website. Um, you would have to be a member in order to sign into that. And once you sign into that, you would go into um, the Symphonic Services Division page. And in there you will see cliff notes for running a meeting. And you can download this 10-page document. And it will tell you most of what you need to know. It's a wonderful primer uh, about how to run a meeting and what to do at a meeting. Thank you very much for coming and uh, explaining all this. Thank you. My pleasure.